Pour être chargé jusqu'à ce que allumé. Voilà, voilà, elle est allumée. Oh là là. He was only 19 years old. That's when French physicist Alexandre Edmond Becquerel noticed that certain materials give off tiny amounts of electric current when sunlight hits them. That was in 1839. But nobody actually put the sun to work to make useful power for nearly half a century after that. And it wasn't until 1954 that scientists at Bell Labs created the first really useful device for solar electric generation, the silicon crystal photovoltaic cell, PV cell for short. The first ones were only about 4% efficient, but they still produce useful power today, more than 50 years later. And their direct descendants are now poised to create carbon-free power on a colossal scale. A photovoltaic cell is a sandwich made of slices of silicon. One slice is baked with a smattering of other elements that give it a negative electrical charge. The other pops out of the oven spiced with a positive charge. Between the two lies a zone called, not surprisingly, the negative-positive junction. The bottom silicon slice is cooked onto a conductive metal backplane. The top slice is laced with electrical contacts, then iced with an anti-glare coating, because silicon usually reflects sunlight just like a mirror. And it's all covered with a protective sheet of plastic or glass. Here's what's actually going on down in the realm of atoms. The sun blasts out photons in all directions. Think of them as particles of light. Photons zip right through the negative layer, but many of them smack into silicon atoms of the positive layer, knocking some electrons loose. These free electrons are propelled up conductive contacts within the positive layer and cross over to contacts on the negative layer, creating an electrical potential. Electric current now runs off to do useful work, moving in the opposite direction from the electron flow. Here's the visible spectrum of the sun. Violet light packs the biggest punch, red light the least. PV cells can be tuned to get the most energy from particular colors or wavelengths of light. And some new arrays work by stacking cells of different color sensitivities so they can squeeze out more juice for the same surface area. But even with this scheme, most PV cells cannot do better than about 25% efficiency. So the best approach is to put a lot of cells under the sun. Cells are typically connected in series. That means the positive contact of the first cell is hooked to the negative contact of the next and so on. And together they form a string. And then multiple strings are joined to form a photovoltaic array. The current that comes out of solar arrays is DC, direct current. It constantly flows in one direction. But most machines and home appliances use AC, alternating current. To change your solar array's DC into AC, you need a device called an inverter. AC is a better way to go if the current has to travel long distances. So that's exactly what your power utility company sends you down the wires. In full sunlight, your solar array actually makes your electric meter run backwards. This is called net metering. So let's do some numbers. Solar panels themselves run about $5 per watt. Add in costs for the inverters, metering, wiring, the structure to put the panels on, plus professional installation, and you're spending more like $7 or $8 a watt. How much solar you buy will depend on what you're intending to power and how sunny your sky tends to be. For most North American homes, a system capable of driving about 7 kilowatts of peak load will work fine. That'll cost you roughly $50,000, but you'll likely be able to get at least a third of that back in rebates and tax credits. It should completely pay for itself in 5 to 10 years, possibly much faster if your property value goes up. And you can expect a typical home-scale solar system to last at least 25 years. And during those years, you will have reduced your carbon footprint on this planet by well over 200 tons. That's like not driving your car for nearly half a million miles. If you own or run a large business, you can make a much larger contribution to carbon reduction. This Walmart supercenter in Chino, California, generates nearly 600 kilowatts from more than 3,400 solar modules on its roof. 
It's one of 22 locations in Walmart's solar pilot project, which, when it's done, will produce up to 20 million kilowatt hours a year and reduce the company's greenhouse gas emissions by at least 6,500 tons per year. Ultimately, all the energy resources of this planet, except nuclear, were once solar energy. All the coal, oil, and gas lying beneath the ground were once plants growing on Earth's surface, converting sunlight to sustenance, switching the sun. (laughs) 